A savage home invasion rocks an exclusive Texas enclave as residents try to cope, an even bigger shocker was waiting to be revealed. To the residents of Rivercrest Estates, Jack and Karen Coslow seem like the perfect pair. Karen and Jack Coslow lived in a very exclusive neighborhood of Fort Worth called Rivercrest. He was an executive for an oil company and she was an oil heiress. But in the early morning hours of March 12, 1992, the Coslow mansion became the scene of a violent home invasion. We went stairway into the victim's bedroom and there uh, observed Mrs. Coslow and a very, very bloody crime scene. The victim suffered numerous blows to the head with a pry bar, slashing of the throat, crushing of the larynx. According to medical reports, Jack's wife, Karen, suffered a fatal blow to the neck. Although he was gravely injured, Jack miraculously survived the attack. He had fled from the scene to a neighbor's house and called 911. Jack's 17-year-old daughter from his first marriage, Christy Coslow, was not at home at the time of the attack. When the community heard about the crime, their first thought was, oh, we're so glad that Christy's safe. She wasn't there. Actually, she was at her mother's house that night. At the brutal crime scene, police discovered a significant piece of evidence. A, a bloody knife, which was left lying on the floor, that turned out to belong to Jack. Initially, Jack Coslow became a suspect. He had injuries to his hands that were difficult to explain. He had some difficulty remembering a lot of what had happened. Detective Brandon first was convinced that uh, Jack had done this. However, forensics cleared Jack. The wounds were just the kind that could not have been self-inflicted. Plus, Jack was very, very cooperative with police. Then, the police department received a phone call that changed everything. That magic phone call we all look for was some information that might crack the case. And this was an informant who had known a young man by the name of Jeffrey Dillingham for a period of time. A friend of Jeffrey Dillingham's turned him in and said that Jeffrey had given him a bunch of evidence from the case, bloody shirt, the, the bloody pry bar, and police were quick, quickly realized they had a teen murder on their hands. Jeffrey Dillingham was a 19-year-old former honor student. He was arrested 12 days after the murder. Dillingham made a startling confession. I hit Mr. Coslow in the back of the head on the neck with the pry bar, and Mrs. Coslow started screaming. I hit Mrs. Coslow some more. Christy wanted it done and we'll do it now. Christy Coslow was the mastermind in this case. I believe she provided the information, the map, the alarm code, and encouraged her boyfriend at that time, Brian Salter, to carry this out. She and her stepmother did not get along at, well at all. It was a very, very dysfunctional, very, very volatile situation. According to police, Christy and Brian then recruited Brian's friend Jeffrey to kill Christy's parents, and Christy, in exchange, offered a million dollars out of her inheritance to Brian and Jeffrey. Police arrested Christy Coslow and Brian Salter and charged all three with capital murder and attempted capital murder. Jeffrey Dillingham was offered a life sentence if he testified against Christy and Brian. Dillingham refused, and in August 1993, he went on trial. Jeffrey Dillingham makes a very risky decision. He thinks he can beat the case. A jury found Dillingham guilty of capital murder and sentenced him to death by lethal injection. A month later, Brian Salter turned on his sweetheart. After Brian sees Jeffrey go down, Brian accepts the deal. He testifies against his former girlfriend, Christy. He gets a life sentence. By June of 1994, it was finally Christy's turn in court. The defense says that she was being unfairly blamed for a murder that these two other guys committed. However, the trial revealed that Christy confessed to the murder for hire in March of 1992. Uh, if I'm understanding you correctly, express to Brian that you wanted Jack and Karen out of the way. Yes. She didn't really intend for these young men to go out and actually kill them. 
It was more of just big talk and it got out of hand. People look at Christie and they say, what are you so angry about? What are you rebelling against? You have parents who love you. You can go to the best schools. You're living in the best neighborhoods. Your future is bright. Everything should be fine. Jack told the courtroom what he thought Christie's punishment should be. I take it that the converse is that if you were recommending, you would recommend that you get the death penalty. Yes, sir. That's what she gave Karen. The jury sentenced Christy Coslow to life in prison. She will be eligible for parole in 2027. On November 1st, 2000, Jeffrey Dillingham took his final breath and died by lethal injection. In a world where some would kill for money, it's not always the victims who pay the ultimate price.